are you a single woman over 50 who's out there in the dating world looking for love with the right man? Well, if you are, that's great news because this is a fantastic time of life to be looking for love. You know more about who you are, what you want, and where you're going. And all of those things can help you to meet and attract the right relationship into your life. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing 10 key questions you want to ask yourself as you go out there into the world of dating. And even though I'll only be able to touch on each of them briefly, I promise that if you ask yourself these questions and think about them deeply and explore them in a significant way, they can make a big difference for you. So my name is Michelle Marchant Johnson and I'm with Love Life Coaching and I'm privileged to work with incredible women around the world to help them be centered in their own value, make their decisions from that place of knowing their own value and to attract their high quality man. So let's jump in, shall we? Let's look at each one of these 10 questions. The first question you wanna ask yourself is, what do you really want in terms of a relationship at this stage in life? Do you want companionship? Do you want someone that you can be in a loving, committed partnership relationship with? Do you want that to lead to marriage? These are important questions to ask because you want to make sure that your vision of what you want for a relationship is aligned with the man that you want to partner with. Otherwise, there can be conflict and difficulty if two people want different things. And I want you to feel confident and clear about being able to claim by speaking the words and feeling in your heart and knowing in your mind what it is you really want for yourself in terms of a relationship. Like, what's the big dream right now? For me, when I was a single woman, I wanted to meet and attract the man of my dreams and I wanted to have marriage. I wanted to have that marriage and partnership and to build a life with someone. And acknowledging that was a really important thing for me because it helped me be clear so that I didn't get tempted to get into relationships with men who were not able or willing for whatever reason to provide that kind of relationship and partnership. Question number two is, what are your absolute need to haves and deal breakers? So an example of a need to have might be that he has a stable career, stable finances, or a deal breaker might be that he has addictions, alcoholism, drugs, pornography, whatever the case may be. So these are key things to know though, because again, they help you so that you stay true to what is really most important to you rather than investing in a relationship where one of these deal breakers exist or one of these need to haves do not exist because at this stage in life, you don't want to invest months and years of your precious life energy into the wrong relationship. So it's important for you to know the answer to those things for yourself. Number three is what kind of a lifestyle do you want to have? What kind of lifestyle do you want to have now? What kind of lifestyle do you want to have as you move into or are retired? Or maybe you're going to have the kind of lifestyle where you're going to continue working for the rest of your life. But again, it's important to know what your vision is and what you hope to have in terms of a lifestyle. If you lead a healthy, active lifestyle, you like to travel, it could be really important to know those things about yourself as you're considering partnership with someone. Because again, those incompatibilities in that area can be can cause difficulties, pain, and even a breakdown of a relationship. Question number four is, what kind of sexual attraction or sex life is important to you? Now, of course, attraction is important. But for some people, as they age, the sexual attraction and the sexual activity or the sex life that they share with a partner becomes less important. For some people in their 50s, 60s, even beyond, this is still extremely important. But again, this is a way that you wanna be 
um, in tune with what's important to you so that you can see if you have a matching energy in that way with a potential partner. Because I can think of few things that are more disappointing for either a man or a woman to find than a partner, a romantic partner who no longer has sexual interest if they didn't anticipate that. Okay, number five is you have to think about what the financial ramifications would be of marriage, partnership, that sort of thing, particularly if you're a woman who has assets and particularly if you're getting involved with or considering a relationship with someone who also has assets or who doesn't have as many assets as you. There can be significant financial ramifications and once we're in our 50s and beyond, um, it can be harder to it can be harder to recover from financial losses, and it can be more challenging if you're not kind of equal or similar in terms of your financial situations. So these are things to explore and things to understand and things to consider in terms of relationship and partnership, because again. Money can be one of those things that can really cause a lot of conflict. And if a relationship, a particularly a marriage relationship, doesn't work out, it can have a significant financial impact. So that's an important thing to think about and to consider. Number six is what are your core values? What are some core values that you live by? Like what do you center your life around? The ways that you invest your time, energy, money can be ways to consider looking at this because having someone with shared or similar or compatible values is one of the keys to having a successful relationship. Having values that are dramatically different oftentimes can cause conflict. So if certain things are really important to you, a religious faith, a uh, family, a uh, certain causes, certain political beliefs, those kinds of things. If you don't have someone who has shared values, that can be a source of conflict, disappointment, and misunderstanding. So knowing what your core values are is really, really important. Number seven is why do you want to have a relationship now? What in your life makes this the right time for a relationship with you? Yes, it's true that having a desire for a relationship is part of that, but also considering every other aspect of your life. If you have children still at home, if you have a demanding career situation, if you're caring for older parents, um, you know, those are things that can cause challenges in terms of your time and availability for a relationship. It doesn't mean you can't have one. But it's important to ask what makes it the right time or why is this the right time for you and uh, consider some of the other things that are going on in your life and how that might impact you. Number eight is what might hold you back? What might hold you back from having a great relationship right now? Are there things that would get in the way? That's kind of related to the, the previous question. Number nine, I think this is a really important question to ask, are, is what are some of the key things, the key lessons, the key takeaways that you are bringing forward from past relationships? So hopefully, even if past relationships haven't worked out or have been disappointing or have ended in ways that were painful, there have been gifts in them in terms of the lessons and the wisdom that you have gained that you can bring forward not to make you bitter or not to project what is in the past onto a current or future relationship, but in, in terms of giving you wisdom and insights that can be valuable to help you avoid previous mistakes or errors of judgment or things that may have caused challenges or trouble in previous relationships. So this is an opportunity to look over past relationship patterns some of the things that happened in past relationships and glean the gifts of wisdom from them so that you can have the knowledge to do better in a current or future relationship in those ways that you may have gotten in your own way um, in, in previous relationships. Number 10 is 
what are your expectations of a relationship? Now, this is a really interesting one because whether we know it or not, all of us bring certain expectations with us into a relationship. Sometimes we're aware of them. Sometimes we're not. Sometimes they're more like unconscious, but we have an idea of how things should be, what a man should do, how a man should show up, and what a relationship should look and feel like. That's okay. We all have them. Men coming into relationships will have them too. But it's important to ask yourself what some of your key expectations are, because those may be some of the things that you might want to express to someone as you're exploring partnership, or you might want to ask yourself if you think this is the kind of person that might be able to show up for you in that way. And another big piece of this is it's really important to recognize that no one person on the planet, no matter how wonderful the man may be, is going to meet all of your needs or all of your expectations. So it's important to consider how you might get some of those expectations met by friendships, by family relationships, by other social opportunities or groups, so that you don't have the expectation and the partner that you might be um, in partnership with doesn't have the pressure of feeling the responsibility for meeting all of your expectations. That's an impossible task for any of us. And this helps us allow for the humanness of ourselves and for the other person when we recognize that we all have needs, we all have expectations, but it's not fair to expect one person to meet all of those needs and all of those expectations. So you can also look at this from the point of view of what key expectations might I absolutely need to have from my romantic partner? So for example, the sexual relationship, if you want to be in a monogamous relationship, that would be a, an expectation that you would have and a need that you would have to come solely from that romantic partner. Some of your social needs in terms of things that you like to do or hobbies or interests you might be able to share with friends or other groups or other people so that you get some of your other needs met um, outside of the primary love relationship. So I think these are 10 key questions to think about. Each one of these could be a video in and of themselves. But if you would take the time to think about each of these things, I think it can help you to be more clear about who may or may not be an appropriate fit for you as you're out there in the dating world. I hope this has helped. I hope that you will be sure to click on the subscribe button and the little bell so you can be notified about new content. And I also hope you will leave your comments and questions below because that helps me to know some of the other things that are on your mind and also other video ideas that you might like for me to speak to. So thank you so much for being here. I'm sending you love and blessings. And I want you to know that I believe that love after 50 is not only possible, but happens all the time. I work with women in their 50s, 60s, even 70s. And it's so exciting to see women find love a little later in life. I'm sending you love and blessings, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.